Hey, just uploaded that new Scout video I was telling you about. Already? You just finished your last video a couple weeks ago. I know, I just really wanted to get this one out. I'm really proud of it. I'm glad, but... Wow, that was quick. Oh, this guy oh, turns it on. He's turning it on. Oh! Yeah! Wait, Ricky Stenhouse in the 17th to third place. White flag with Stenhouse. Super speed is the most overpowered superpower. Like, why would you ever want to be stronger or move things with your mind when you could just be faster than everyone else? Being faster means you complete every task at a speedier rate. Not only is your body faster, but your brain is too. If you're able to do everything at a quicker rate, then you have more time than everyone else. More time means more time to do things. More things getting done means you're a more efficient human. If you can be faster at doing something perfectly, that makes you better at the thing than everyone else. This is especially true in video games, where competition is often won or lost based off the speed of one's abilities and actions. Being quick is one of the most satisfying parts of video games for many people. Like sure, there are games where carefully choosing each action and meticulously managing every resource can be engaging, but what if you were able to do all of that with speed? Imagine knowing so much about a given game that you can rush through its hardest sections with ease, worried only about how low you can make the number on the stopwatch go down. This is why speedrunning is so interesting to so many people. It takes something a lot of people do, playing video games, and pushes it to its chronological extreme. The gradual loss of control that occurs the faster a game is played makes speedrunners appear almost inhuman. They're able to counteract that loss of control and make the speed of their gameplay into not a frustration, but an art. In video games, the ability to be fast will always be appealing to a large amount of people. Enter the Scout. The Scout is a very common archetype in video games, as well as fiction in general. Often small and thin, the Scout's primary characteristic is their speed. They are meant to move quickly around the battlefield, often having a form of burst damage meant to prioritize getting in and out of a situation as efficiently and concisely as possible. This is also often balanced by low health and a lack of sustain. The word glass cannon is often used to describe Scouts, as they do a lot of damage, but can't take a lot of damage themselves. This means that the people who play as scouts have to be constantly aware of the dangers of their speed. If a car crashes while going 5 miles per hour, everyone inside the car is likely okay. But if the car is going at 50 miles per hour, well... Speed is as terrifying as it is useful. Often a scout's greatest lesson comes in the form of a simple phrase. Just because you have the ability to go fast, doesn't mean you always should. This is especially true in activities involving a team. A musician might have the admittedly impressive ability to play a song at double its normal tempo, but if the rest of the ensemble isn't on the same page, it's a useless trait. A midfielder can run up and down the side of a soccer field over and over again, but if his team never passes him the ball, what was the point of going fast? In real life, going fast is only effective when it's utilized carefully and thoughtfully. Therefore, a well-designed scout character in a video game would reward the player for thinking before sprinting. They would succeed by analyzing the situation in front of them, looking for the optimal opening, and finally striking with quick, decisive blows to take down their enemies and complete their objectives. By my estimation, there are three well-designed scouts in three separate games that devastate their enemies with their quick attacks and dynamic movement abilities. Each one of these characters is the pinnacle of running and gunning, with all of them offering a unique way to blitz enemies before they even have the chance to blink. Though they each differ wildly, they all share the same talent. These are gaming scouts, and this is what they do. Team Fortress 2 is a class-based, team-focused shooter with nine different classes. Yeah, we heard that already. What do you think, you Morgan Freeman or something? Get on with it! Okay, okay. Okay. Anyways, the scout from Team Fortress 2, also known as Jeremy, is one of nine different classes featured in the game. Of course, as with all the scouts featured in this video, his focus is on going fast. A stock scout has the fastest base running speed in the entire game, and can even raise his max running speed through the babyface's blaster. Though you probably shouldn't. That weapon kind of sucks. 
This running speed allows him to reach important places in the map faster than all his counterparts, which can help him with reaching and capturing control points before his enemies can. He also has a built-in times 2 multiplier to his capturing rate for control points and the speed at which he pushes the payload. Not only is TF2 Scout meant to move fast, he's meant to end games ASAP. There's no point in prolonging a fight for more time than it has to go. Scout is a class that's meant to put a decisive end to any obstacle in his way. And not only does he move quickly, but he kills quickly. Scout has one of the lowest kill times in all of TF2, dealing anywhere between 180 and 220 damage at maximum ramp up. That's enough to kill 8 of the 9 classes in 5 eighths of a second. No other class in Team Fortress 2, except for Sniper and Spy, can consistently kill their enemies with such speed. And unlike those two classes, Scout doesn't have to hit a specific part of the body to bonk his opponent into oblivion. All he has to do is be close enough to the enemy to hit them with all 10 of his Scattergun's pellets. And that's easy to accomplish with how fast Scout's ground speed is. He also has the ability to reach portions of the map that no other character can with his exclusive ability. The Double Jump. While other classes have movement abilities that allow them faster bursts of speed than Scout can muster, Scout's Double Jump gives him on-demand mobility for the low, low cost of pressing the spacebar two times. This means that he can reach niche parts of the map incredibly easily, sneaking behind enemy lines using routes that no other class can. If there's a sniper hardscoped down an important sightline, there's no class better than Jeremy to flank behind him and end his reign of terror over the choke point. This is even more true through unlockable weapons like the Winger, Atomizer, and Soda Popper, all of which can make Scout's movement even more insane and open up maps in ways that the other classes can't really compete with. That said, while Scout may move fast, that means he also dies really fast. With a base 125 health, he's in a three-way tie for the lowest base health in the entire game. If he as much as breathes in the direction of an engineer's sentry, Jeremy will find himself sprinting from the spawn room within seconds of his mistake. A large portion of TF2's maps have sharp corners that easily obscure enemies behind them. As such, it's very easy for a novice scout to sprint around a corner without peeking or thinking and instantly dying as a result. Just as important as it is to go fast, it's also important to slow, slow down. Down, down, down. Out of all of the scouts in this video, Jeremy is the fastest killer. Relative to his fellow mercenaries, the scout's potential kill time is incredibly low, and he doesn't have to meet a specialized condition in order to achieve his high damage output. His goal on his team is to alternate between the front line and the flank, distributing his killing potential to each part of the battlefield as evenly and efficiently as possible using his immense speed. He's a fast talker, a faster runner, and the fastest killer in the gravel pit he fights for. <laughs> Following TF2's release was another game in the same genre, Overwatch, a hero shooter released in 2016. Upon its release, comparisons were swiftly drawn between TF2's Scout and another character prominently featured in Overwatch's box art, Tracer. She, like Jeremy, is primarily a flanking character, delivers her damage in bursts, and is one of the most versatile characters in both Overwatch and its sequel, Overwatch 2. Also like TF2's predecessor, she has a propensity for moving incredibly quickly. Though her base running speed is relatively slow, she has the ability to essentially teleport instantaneously at the push of a button. This ability is known as Tracer's Blink. The Blink makes it easy for her to sneak behind enemy lines and capture a defending team's objective without being detected, assuming of course the enemy team doesn't keep an eye on their heads up display. This single ability is what makes Tracer so versatile. Similar to Jeremy's double jump, Tracer's Blink allows for quick burst movement that gives Tracer the means to reach parts of each map that the average hero can't get to. It also gives Tracer the ability to easily flank behind enemies in 1v1 situations, making her incredibly difficult to kill when she has access to the maximum 3 blinks she can have at her disposal at once. Additionally, Tracer can rewind time, allowing her to easily escape to safety in the event that she is caught out without her blinks. This, in turn, makes her incredibly proficient at a variety of roles, including literally scouting out the enemy team at the beginning of a match and delivering information to her team. This trait is particularly of interest in Overwatch, where the enemy team's hero composition is vitally important to countering their strategy and winning each match. In this way, Tracer is actually very good in the role of a scout, contrary to absurdly popular belief. Many consider Tracer an inferior version of TF2's fast-talking, run-and-gun Bostonian, but she's used to being underestimated. Out of all the characters in Overwatch, Tracer is often regarded as one of the most difficult characters to play, having a low skill floor, but an absurdly high skill ceiling. By the same token, she's also widely considered one of the best characters in the entire game. 
However, this low skill floor also means that new Tracer players can often be a borderline liability on a team, since they don't usually know what they're doing. Tracer can feel like driving a race car sometimes. If you are proficient and practiced, it feels like you're just barely avoiding certain death through careful, calculated choices and insane situational awareness. But if you've never driven a race car before, you might as well go ahead and throw your car into the crash fence because you aren't making it a full lap in one piece. What most obviously separates a good Tracer from a bad one is also Tracer's biggest weakness, her health. Tracer has 150 total health, the lowest health pool in the entire game. This puts her under the one-hit KO threshold for quite a few characters, and means she'll die near instantaneously from focus fire lasting more than a few seconds. A bad player puts this on full display, basically being a free kill as long as you can kind of sort of aim. However, if you're playing against a Tracer who knows how to use and abuse every movement ability at her disposal, you'd be remiss in forgetting how low her health really is. The trick to accomplishing this is to slow, slow down. 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 If a Tracer carefully chooses where and when to strike by analyzing the state of the game before rushing in, she can seem almost unkillable due to her small hitbox and quick movement. Many players regard her as one of the biggest pests in the entire game, not too dissimilar to her big brother from TF2, who can also be quite annoying at times. Out of all three of these scouts, Tracer is easily the one that can move the fastest. While Jeremy can kill more quickly due to the speedy firepower at his disposal, Tracer is a menace not because of the speed of her attack, but the speed of herself. Her abilities all complement her design perfectly, inviting players to learn how to control her unwieldy and rapid movement to be a pick-getting pest on their team. In her element, she's easily the speediest scout gaming has ever seen. <laughs> Deep Rock Galactic is the most recent game being discussed here, releasing in early 2018. Unlike the previous two games, DRG is a PvE game, meaning you'll be fighting against AI-controlled enemies and environmental hazards as opposed to other real people, and you'll be overcoming these obstacles as one of four classes. The Engineer, Driller, Gunner, and of course, the Scout. Deep Rock Galactic offers a unique twist on this archetype compared to Overwatch and TF2. While Tracer and Jeremy have unique traits that make them physically faster than all of their comrades, this short stubby dwarf is about the same speed as his team is. While he has movement abilities that make him faster, so do the rest of the classes in this game. So what makes this dwarf the Scout? While the two other Scouts in this video are renowned for being fast, Deep Rock Galactic Scout is equipped with abilities designed to make his team complete their respective objectives faster. Often in DRG, a team that's attempting to complete a mission as fast as possible will assign dwarves to more than one task at the same time. Maintaining the workflow of a mission while completing an objective is one of DRG's most difficult skills to master. The purpose of the scout is to expedite completing each task, getting in and out of the caves as fast as possible. The scout accomplishes this in two separate ways. First and most obviously, he has the best flares in the entire game. Vision is one of the most important things to maintain in DRG. A man can't see, he can't fight. Caves, believe it or not, are dark, and every task Mission Control gives you is easier to complete under premier lighting conditions. Every dwarf in Deep Rock has access to flares that can help the team's vision, but the Scout Dwarf has the most powerful flares out of any of the cast. The second way Scout speeds up his team is through using his grappling <laughs> With this ability, the Scout can speed across gaps and reach high up places very quickly. This, in turn, allows him to easily accomplish parts of the objective that would take the rest of his team much longer to finish. For instance, if you're playing Egg Hunt as Scout, you can grapple to reach all of the eggs in the cave much faster than any of your fellow dwarves. This means your team can spend their time defending you or depositing the eggs instead of gathering the eggs themselves, making you an overall more efficient team. This also applies when gathering a quarks in on-site refining and mining more kite in mining expedition, though the engineer's platforms greatly assist with these tasks in addition to the scout's grappling hook abilities. No matter what mission you're in, however, being able to zipline your way across the map is always incredibly useful at accomplishing tasks as quickly as possible, which speeds up your team as a whole exponentially. Not to mention, unlike the other two scouts being discussed in this video, DRG Scout has a decent amount of bulk and can withstand a decent amount of damage before getting taken down. However, much like the other two scouts, the dwarf's fast burst movement can often result in him getting ahead of himself and overcommitting to one action or another. His two weapons, a hitscan weapon and a burst damage weapon, are strong enough to keep him sustained in a fight for a decent amount of time, 
but they won't save the scout from being overconfident and rushing into an unwinnable situation. And if the scout is down, the workflow of the team grinds to a halt as the dwarves have to rescue their fallen hero. This means that the mission takes more time and the objective is accomplished less quickly, which is something no scout can stand for. As such, it's vital that scout learns to slow, slow down. down. Every scout should look before they grapple and assess the danger they may or may not be getting themselves into. If you don't know where you're speeding off to, you may become more of a liability for your team than an asset. Out of all three of these scouts, DRG Scout is the best team player. While the other two scouts are often best on their own, disconnected from their team while they flank behind enemy lines, this short, stubby dwarf works best when he's positioned close to his comrades. This follows DRG's design philosophy, being based around teamwork and efficient cooperation as a core part of the gameplay. This doesn't mean that DRG Scout is slow by any means. Quite the contrary, this means that the rest of his team has to keep up with him, as he buffs them all and helps speed them to a victorious mission on Hoxus 4. If you ask the average level 99 professional RGB keyboard wielding gamer what defined a scout in a video game, they'd probably say that it's the speed. Going fast is what defines a scout. While I would agree, I think it's a little bit more nuanced than that. I think scouts are defined less by their speed, and more by their relationship with timing. Think about it, all three of these characters perform at their absolute best not when they're moving fast, but when their attacks are well thought out and well timed. If Jeremy over here runs into the intel room and gets blown away by 10 billion level 3 sentries, he's simply the average scout doing his average scout thing. Just another newbie with bad game sense. Nothing special. But if the scout were to slow down and realize the danger that's present in the room he's about to sprint into, he'll save himself the trouble of trying to take on the five engineers in the room and instead redirect his attention elsewhere. Scout is much less about the speed that you have and more about the ability for you to choose your battles. Anyone can use DRG Scout's grappling hook or Tracer's blink and be halfway across the map within seconds. It's not difficult, complicated, or even particularly helpful. But if you can slow down, analyze the state of the game, and attack when the enemy is weakened or unprepared, you suddenly become an invaluable asset to your team's success. I think that the average gamer can have the tendency to simplify these characters to just the class that goes faster than everyone else. This tendency is assisted by the players of these characters, who often find themselves using their speed as a vehicle to overextend into undesirable locations. Players who are given the opportunity to go fast often take that chance and use that ability as much as possible, but rarely think about when they should use it, or whether they should use it at all. Just because you can go fast, doesn't mean you should. The same is often true in real life. Often we, as people, find something that's working for us in life. Something that makes life go by faster. Whether that be a person who makes you smile a lot, a job that you really like doing, or a song that you really like to listen to. As a result, you want to consume that feeling as much as possible, to give your brain more and more of that dopamine and serotonin it craves so badly. People often like living life at an elevated pace, trying to achieve the maximum amount of fun as fast as possible. It's easy to think that life is a ticking clock, and that your job is to scout out as many of those good times as quickly as you can before the clock strikes noon for the final time. However, just because you have the ability to get that dopamine doesn't mean it's worthwhile. Just because you have the ability to go fast doesn't mean you should. Sometimes the best moments in life are achieved by slowing down. Just because you enjoy baking doesn't mean you should do it every waking hour of every day. Taking the time to prepare a specific day to bake might make that day feel more valuable. Similar to how all these characters perform at their best when they slow down, we as humans don't perform at our maximum potential if we don't give ourselves the chance to slow down. I encourage anyone who's made it to this point in the video to take a moment at some point today and relax. Do something different, try something new. It's important to find even a few minutes each day to slow down amidst scouting for that happiness we're all pursuing. After all, a runner who sprints a race may go fast, but a runner who paces themselves will go far. Thank you for watching.